Hi everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack, and in this podcast we'll be covering shock and homeostasis. When the cardiovascular system cannot transport enough blood flow through cardiac output to supply oxygen gas and nutrients to tissue cells, the condition of shock is induced. In the absence of adequate oxygen, tissue cells switch their metabolism from aerobic to anaerobic respiration in order to generate enough ATP. This causes a buildup of excessive lactic acid in the body's tissues. If shock goes untreated, cellular death and organ damage may occur. Shock has many signs and symptoms, including a weak but rapid resting pulse rate, which is known as tachycardia, clammy, cool, and pale skin as a result of vasoconstriction, an altered mental state from cerebral ischemia, hypotension or low blood pressure, a low cardiac output, sweating due to sympathetic stimulation, thirst due to a loss of extracellular fluid, acidosis, which is low blood pH due to lactic acid buildup, and decreased urine formation due to vasoconstriction and increased aldosterone and ADH, antidiuretic hormone secretion. There are four types of shock. Hypovolemic shock brought on by lower blood volume. Cardiogenic shock caused by decreased heart function. Vascular shock from inappropriate vasodilation and obstructive shock caused by blockages to blood flow. Hypovolemic shock is commonly caused by sudden external or internal hemorrhaging, poor fluid intake, or through the loss of body fluids as a result of excessive sweating, vomiting, or diarrhea. As a result of this loss of body fluid volume, venous return to the heart slows down, the heart doesn't fill with as much blood, stroke volume decreases, and there is a decrease in cardiac output. This type of shock is treated by replacing fluid volume as fast as possible. Cardiogenic shock is often caused by a myocardial infarction, or heart attack, which prevents the heart from contracting normally. It can also be the result of ischemia, which is poor perfusion or blood flow of the heart, problems with the heart valves, too much preload or afterload, arrhythmias, irregular heart rhythms, or poor contraction of the cardiac muscle fibers. If there is a decrease in systemic vascular resistance that leads to a drop in blood pressure, vascular shock can occur, even if blood volume and cardiac output are normal. Inappropriate vasodilation of the arterioles and venules can occur through many different ways. Anaphylactic shock occurring as a result of a severe allergic reaction like a bee sting or antibiotic allergy causes the release of chemicals such as histamine that trigger vasodilation. Neurogenic shock is caused by head trauma, which damages the cardiovascular center, resulting in vasodilation. Septic shock, the leading cause of death in hospital intensive care units, is due to vasodilation induced by toxins produced by bacterial infection. Obstructive shock is the result of a blockage in circulation such as a pulmonary embolism in the lung's blood vessels.